The wireless game from ICE Options is strong this year. And no, my friends, this is not a Logitech G502. Hello good people, I'm Dimitri and this is the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. A wireless mouse clearly influenced by the popular G502 Lightspeed and G604 Lightspeed mice with similar overall shape like the angular front buttons, glossy streaks adding complexity to the top area, thumb support on the left side and similar weight and feel. However, this thing surprised me with a few interesting innovations that would make me pick the Basilisk, Basilisk, man I can't say that word, over the G502 Lightspeed. The NMX T50 Axe air cooler now comes in this gorgeous white finish with an addressable RGB high pressure fan along with a patented air guide grill to increase airflow. The Vortex differential fin design helps increase air convection around the heat pipes so that your CPU can stay nice and cool. Learn more in the description down below. So first, let's get the basics out of the way. The mouse only is $149, while the bundle with the mouse dock is $169, and that is a much better deal as the dock by itself is $49. The Basilisk Ultimate is slightly lighter versus the G502 Lightspeed at 107 grams, and it fits perfectly in that slightly heavy uh, wireless segment, as Razer already has a lightweight champion, the Viper Ultimate, at 74 grams. I really like the dock design, not just the illumination, but the entire convenience around it. So you plug in the tiny USB receiver that is slightly smaller versus the Logitech dongle by the way. The cable can be unplugged from the dog and into the mouse with micro USB in case you want to use the mouse with the cable that by the way is excellent. It's perfectly flexible and light and spans 1.8 meters. But if you do get the dongle you quickly get into a habit of placing this on it whenever you leave the PC so you'll never have to worry about charging this thing or using it with a cable I like this implementation. The USB dongle can be housed in this bottom compartment with a cover. It's a lovely implementation and a secure hold even with the cover removed. Here we see charging points, a power button and a profile switcher and the feet are 100% PTFE with a smooth glide, no complaints here. The main surface texture of the mouse feels good but it immediately leaves finger marks while the textured sides are rubberized and secure the grip. The build quality overall is pretty good, my only complaint is slight rattle with the scroll wheel and the two buttons behind it. Take a listen. In typical Razer fashion, illumination is gorgeous, wonderfully uniform on the logo, the scroll wheel and the two side strips, and I set my brightness to 30% and this thing looks fantastic. All right, so now onto some cool features, a new scroll wheel with adjustable resistance and a new optional paddle button. So the scroll wheel, this one is my favorite, the texture, the light side clicks, the wonderful middle click, but then we also have the option to remove resistance aka remove the scroll steps or add resistance for really distinct scroll actuations. So at maximum resistance, we have really defined scroll steps, gives you a lot of control, actually quite loud too. While at minimum resistance, the scroll wheel becomes incredibly smooth and quiet too. Great for quiet environments, libraries, etc. Don't get this confused with hyper scroll with Logitech offers with that continuous endless looping until you stop the scroll wheel. That is not possible with the Basilisk, but I love the fine and almost granular control of how uh, how the scroll steps feel. So you can have something in the middle. So not super hard, something like this or slightly harder. I love that implementation and uh, you have a pretty wide range of resistance to choose from. Now the paddle button by default is covered by a rubber flap uh, into which you insert the paddle itself. The mount is magnetic and it sits right in front of your thumb. So for me, hand readjustment is necessary to reach, but if you can comfortably use it, you can program it to act as whatever macros, specific DPI levels or whatever else. Now the primary switches are Razer Optical rated at 70 million clicks. They have a little bit more travel distance than my G502. They are also slightly louder, but uh, no complaints. They're fast, super responsive, great tactility, and nice sound too.
shape-wise, this thing is pretty comfortable, great curvature of the primary clicks, and nice slant on the right side. It does feel slightly bigger in the hand versus the slimmer G502 light speed, but the lighter body for me is significantly easier to aim with. Having said that, this isn't my mouse for gaming as it's just too heavy. Target tracking in COD, for example, is much easier with the Viper Ultimate or something lighter, but the Basilisk technically is an excellent performer with Razer's best sensor yet, called the Focus Plus, up to 20,000 DPI with up to five DPI stages with precision and 50 DPI increments with surface tuning and lift off distance adjustment. There's also this new sensor feature called asymmetric cutoff. So for example, lift off distance can be set to two millimeters, but if you lift anything higher than that, the mouse will only resume tracking back at one millimeter. I still haven't figured out where this asymmetric cutoff would be useful. I'm the type of person to set the minimal lift off distance possible because I do lift my mouse quite often, but it is quite cool to have tracking uh, if you lift a mouse and you're like just around two millimeters, but if you go higher than that, it will stop and it will not continue tracking again until you're really low about one millimeter. Um, so yeah, I know we all love to complain about Synapse, but so far I haven't had any issues of like it not remembering my settings. With the Basilisk Ultimate, you can save all your DPI and your profile settings. Unfortunately, for some annoying reason, all your lighting is not saved on the memory. So if you're using this mouse on a computer that does not have Synapse, you're just greeted with some rainbow puke. At least your DPI and profiles are saved, but like, come on. The mouse does hold a charge of about 100 hours without any RGB. In my testing with brightness as 30%, I lasted about 40 hours, and that is pretty impressive. And especially if you get the dock edition, uh, you really never have to worry about battery life. And that is why I would choose the Razer Basilisk Ultimate over the G502 Lightspeed, even though they're the same price point for the mouse only at $149. The $169 price point for the mouse and the dock on the Razer side is just a better value if you go in the wireless direction. I also prefer the scroll wheel on this thing better, and it's also a bit lighter than the G502 Lightspeed. So for productivity and desktop use, this thing is amazing for me personally, and I game with lighter mice, but I'm sure Sure, many people will love this for gaming too. All right, everything's linked below. Thanks so much for watching. How heavy is your mouse? Now that I've been using all the light mice around like the 50 to 70 gram range, using something that is over 100 grams, just like, whoa, a little bit too heavy. But um, yeah, how heavy is your mouse? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video. Man, I cannot launch Red Dead Redemption 2. PC day one problems. <laughs>